Love can be defined in so many ways by so many different people. Lumakad ka sa mall, ang daming quote ngayon ng love. Tama? Pumunta ka sa National Bookstore, talaga naman namamayagpag ang mga Valentine card. Tama ba? Sa Twitter, sa Instagram. Kaya nga ba, may dalawang emosyon kapag araw ng Valentine's Day. Dalawang emosyon. Kasi nga kahit saan ka pumunta, pag-ibig ang pinag-uusapan eh. Kahit saan ka pumunta, nariyan pa yung ano, yung alam nyo yung shape, yung cut out, no? Mag-holding hands sila, ganon, silhouette ng babae, lalaki, ganyan. O kaya naman puso, ganyan. Tapos may lalaki, may babae, ganyan. Eh ang problema, solo ka lang sa buhay mo. Tapos hindi ka pa sure kung may puso ka. No? So every time nakikita mo yan, hindi mo alam ang mararamdaman mo. Matutuwa ba ako sa Valentine's Day na to? So mix emotion tayo, tama? No? Hindi ka makarelate. No? Yung iba naman, relate na relate kasi may mga love life sila. Yan. Kung ano man yung natututunan nyo dahil nasa church tayo ngayon, sa Bible tayo titingin. Nakuha natin. Kasi paglakad nyo dyan, ang dami nyo nang mababasa dyan eh. E dito lang sa church yung opportunity. Aba tingnan nga natin sa Bible. Ano bang tunay na kahulugan ng? Aru. Yan. Pag-uusapan natin ang love. In Tagalog. Another term for pag-ibig is? Yan. Sino sa iya nagahanap ng pag-ibig? Taas ang kamay. So today is from John chapter 15, verse 13. This verse says, Greater love has no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. This is our main text, and we're gonna look at this verse. Sabi doon, greater, there is no greater love than this. So dahil sinabing wala na daw mas titindi pa, wala nang mas bobongga pa, wala nang mas magiging mas astig pa sa pag-ibig na to, kundi itong pag-ibig na ito. So kung sinabing wala nang hihigit pa dyan, ibig sabihin, this is love at its best. And if we're gonna learn about love, let us not learn about love at its lowest level. Let us learn love at its best level so that that is the kind of love that we will receive in our life. And in connection with that, that is the kind of love that we will be able to give out to other people. Because you cannot give what you do not have. Tama po ba? So you cannot give love if you do not have love. And at the same time, if what you know about love is so shallow and so cheap, then that's the kind of love that you will be able to give. Love demands 100%. Love always demands 100%. So if we're going to learn love, let's learn it the way it was given in the scripture. And it says in that verse, greater love is no man than this. And what is this kind of love? It says, a man laying down his life for his friends. This is actually Jesus preaching to his disciples and the people around there listening to them. And Jesus was actually talking and referring to what he is about to, to suffer what he is about to do as an expression of love for mankind. We all know that story. Jesus was crucified. He died on the cross for us. And the reason why he died on the cross for, God, for us is not because he was sinful. Because I want you to understand, friends, the cross is a punishment for sin. It was not created for Jesus. It was for people who committed crimes, who are sinful. So it's a punishment. Meaning to say, each one of us should be on the cross instead. Because Jesus is sinless. He is blameless. He does not deserve the cross. But I want you to understand the reason why Jesus was on the cross is because he took our place. Isn't that amazing? He took our place. So he said, instead na siya ang parusahan, sabi niya, Ama, lahat ng kasalanan ng mga taong ito, ipatong mo sa akin at lahat ng kabayaran, ako na ang magbabayad. And that's the reason why Jesus was on the cross hanging for six hours and then he died and then he was buried and for three days he was under the ground. And then after three days, he rose again. That in itself is the greatest definition and greatest expression of love. And that is exactly what is being referred to here, that there is no greater love than this. Because of this love, I was able to write a poem. Would you like to hear it? Are you sure? Please don't set your expectations so high. I'm not a writer. I just wrote things down here while I was praying and doing my devotional on this particular subject. Listen to this. Love is self-sacrificing. Love 
is giving of oneself. Love calls everybody friends, including those who have hurt you and betrayed you. Love is not an emotion. Love is an action. Love is not inward focus. Love is outward focus. Love is best expressed and cultivated in times of disappointment. Love is love if it loves despite of. Dot, dot, dot. So yan po ang aking tula no, na isinulat para sa aking sarili. Binasa ko sa inyo para marinig nyo. You know, love is a very huge topic. I told my husband, this is the hardest time of my life preparing for a preaching because love is big. And when you look at the Bible, first page of the Bible until the last page of the Bible, it's all about love. So if you ask me to preach on love, that means I'm, I would have to preach from the whole Bible in itself. Because the whole Bible is about love, the love of God reaching out to mankind. And today, I pray that you're going to go through with me in this story as we journey into the discovery of what is this love. We're going to look at the story of Jesus and Peter, their relationship. Peter, as we all know, is one of the disciples who is closest to Jesus. No? Isa siya sa mga closest kasi isa siya sa 12. And Peter, as we all know, is one of the confident disciples. No? Sobrang confident siya sa love niya at sa commitment niya sa Panginoon. Babasahin po natin sa Mark chapter 14. Nakaredy na po ba kayo sa kwentong ito? Magkikwento ako ngayon. Okay lang ba? Yan. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, may kwento ngayon. Sabi mo, makinig ka kasi baka ikaw yon. Okay, Mark 14 verse 29, simula natin. Peter said to him, even though all may fall away, yet I will not. I need to show you who Peter is and then later on you will understand what love is. So just go along with me in this story. So here is the man, Peter, following Jesus, a disciple of the Lord. And then later on, when Jesus was preparing to be crucified, no, malapit na siyang arestohen at malapit na siyang uh, ipako sa krus. So sinabi niya, no? sinabi niya sa mga disciples niya, dadakipin ako, i-crucify ako, pahihirapan nila ako. May mga taong iiwanan ako. Yan. No, parang, parang ikaw, no? parang narinig na kitang nagsabi ng ganyan. Iiwanan nila akong lahat, ganyan naman sila eh. Yan. Ganyan naman kayo eh. Ganyan. Pero here comes the guy named Peter. Sabi niyo, Peter. Peter. Ayan. Sagot naman si Peter, sabi niya, Jesus, kahit na iwanan ka nilang lahat, as in lahat from fifth floor to sixth floor, Kahit iwan ng kanilang lahat, sabi ni Pedro, ibahin mo ko. Yabang! Tinan mo yung katabi mo. Hindi siya yon, Hindi siya yon, Hindi siya yon. Sinabi ko lang na tumingin ka. Ang yabang eh, no? Minsan ganyan tayo pag-uusapang pag-ibig eh. Kala mo, alam na alam mo na eh. This is a man who thought he knew what love is. This is a man who thought he loved Jesus. So here he is, no? Playing with his tongue. Playing with his words. In short, parang nambubola. Yan, yung mga bitter talaga, o oh, lumuluha sila, grabe. Baka lumuha kayo buong, ano, ah, buong topic na to. So in short, nagmamayabang siya, tingnan niyo po. Ang sagot ni Jesus, hindi po sinabi dyan, ako, grabe ka naman, Pedro. Oh, sweet! Ah, sa ganun ba sabi ni Jesus? Grabe, nakakatuwa ka naman. Nakakaaliw talaga tong apostol ko ngayon, tong disipulo kong ito. Hindi. Ang sagot ni Jesus sa verse 30, He's a man of wisdom. Hindi siya cheap love, hindi siya love out of cheap talk lang. Ang gusto ng Diyos, totohanan, love at its best. Love for real, the real deal. Okay, verse 30, Jesus said to him, Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you that this very night, before a rooster crows twice, you yourself will deny me three times. Sa umpisa, parang nagparinig pa lang si Jesus. Yung iba nga dyan eh, iiwanan ako. Sumagot si Peter. Aba, kahit iwanan ka na nilang lahat, bossing, andito lang ako. My forever. Hashtag, my forever. Ang sagot ni Jesus sa kanya, o oh, sige, humanda ka. Bago tumilaok ang manok. 
Bago siya tumilaok, tatlong beses, ide-deny mo ko. Naba? Tingnan natin ang sagot ni Pedro. Verse 31, But Peter kept saying insistently, Even if I have to die with you. Tindi. Tindi neto, man. Sabi niya, I will not deny you. At dahil lang tindi ng pagkasabi niya, sumagot yung mga nasa tabi, sabi nila. And they were all saying the same thing. Umayuda na lahat. Sabi nung sa, hindi. Committed ako sa'yo. Kahit anong mangyari, andito lang ako, Lord. Sabi nung mga ano, nung mga katabi niya, kami din. Alien. Sabi nila, ganyan. No? So, amen sila lahat. Agree sila kay Peter. Ang yabang eh. Alam nyo, ma-warning ako kayo. Wag, wag tayo masyadong mayabang. In fact, dapat hindi tayo mayabang. Pag-usapang pag-ibig, dapat walang yabang. Kasi ang pag-ibig, nasusukat yan eh. Nasusubok yan. Mas mayabang ka, mas matindi pagsubok yan. Kasi si Pedro eh, ang yabang niya. At ang tindi ng pagsubok sa kanya. Okay. So, ito ngayon si Pedro. Anong larawan ni Pedro? Mahal na mahal niya si Lord. No? Umiiyak pa yan pag-worship. No? Talaga. Maakap pa yan kay Lord. No? <laughs> Kapit siya kay Lord. No? Tingnan natin ano nangyari sa kanya sa verse 54. Hindi pa man lumipat ng chapter, ang laki na ng pagbabago kay Peter. <laughs> verse 54. Sabi doon, Peter had followed him at a distance. Anyari, right into the courtyard of the high priest and he was sitting with the officers and warming himself at the fire. Yan tayo eh, kanina lang kasasabi mo, hindi mo ko iiwanan eh. Lumipas lang ang ilang verses eh. Pagkasabi dito, Peter was following at a distance. Ibig sabihin, humakbang si Jesus, hindi siya humakbang. At maaaring ang hakbang niya, paatras pa. So this is a picture of every person trying to follow the Lord, saying they love the Lord, but they follow the Lord at a distance. Ano ibig sabihin ng a person following the Lord at a distance? When you say you are following somebody at a distance, it's as if it's as good as telling the person, I'm gonna follow you for as long as you don't inconvenience me. For as long as you fit in my schedule, we're good. Like the two of us, we're good. But the moment you bother me and my personal life and my schedule and my Valentine's Day, I'm not gonna follow you anymore. So here is the man who started so well. Are you listening? He started so well, loving the Lord, expressing his love to the Lord. But then again, hindi pa nga natapos ang chapter, nagbago na si Peter. No? Lumayo na, sabi doon, following the Lord at a distance. This is when we think that it's just enough to believe the Lord and just be there every Sunday. O, dito ako ha, check nyo attendance ko. Following the Lord at a distance, but the heart is not there anymore. Are you listening? Are you following? So when we follow the Lord, let's make sure that we don't follow Him at a distance and we follow Him up close. Eto masaklap. Baka naman mas pinafollow mo pa ang aldab kaysa kay Jesus. Baka naman mas pinafollow up mo pa yung mga TV series na pinapanood mo up close and personal. Than Jesus. Baka nagpe-Pedro ka. Sa mga babae, baka nagpe-Petra ka. Are you listening? So nakita natin kay Pedro, so huwag tayong pakasisiguro sa pag-ibig natin sa Diyos at huwag tayong pakayayabang sa pag-ibig natin sa Diyos sapagkat si Pedro ay nagsimula na matindi ang pag-ibig sa Panginoon Ilang verses pa lang ang lumipas, malayo na ang puso niya sa Panginoon. Idugtong pa natin sa verse 66. As Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with Jesus the Nazarene. Verse 68. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. And then he went out. Onto the porch. Here is the man who used to say, "Lord, everybody else will leave you, but not me." After a while, he started following Jesus at a distance, not anymore up close. 
at this particular time, he is not just following Jesus at a distance. He started lying about Jesus. He lied. He said, I didn't know that. No, no, I don't know what you're talking about. Now he starts lying. We're serious about following the Lord up close. We're serious about loving the Lord up close. Because that is the consequence of following the Lord from a distance. Not hardcore. Not radical. The moment there is distance between you and Jesus, that's the same moment. Your life starts going down and down and down. It's going to be a downward spiral. So nagsimula ng malayo lang si Pedro. Hanggang sa nagsimula na siyang matutong magsinungaling. Verse 69, the servant girl saw him and began once more to say to the bystanders, this is one of them, kasama talaga yan eh, destiny yan, alam ko destiny yan, SOD pa nga yan eh. Verse 70 says, again, he denied it. And after a little while, the bystanders were again saying to Peter, Surely, you are one of them. You are a Galilean too. In verse 71, he began to curse and swear. He said, I do not know this man you are talking about. So mula sa mahal na mahal, Lord, di kita iiwan. Biglang, Lord, layuan mo ako. Biglang nagsinungaling na. Pagdating dito, it's getting worse. I want you to understand. If we are not determined and serious about following the Lord up close and really, really serious about following Him, our life is really going to create more and more distance from Him. At this particular time, hindi na lang siya nagsinungaling. Napamura pa. Ah! Takot kayo, no? <laughs> ah! Hmm, kinaban, daming kinaban. Oh, Lord Jesus, deliver her from the works of the enemy. I'm not saying it. I just want to keep you awake. No, nagmura pa. Palala ng palala ang buhay ng taong palayo ng palayo sa Diyos. Hindi mahalaga, paano ka nagsimula? Ang mahalaga dito, paano ka magpapatuloy? Are you listening? Hindi mahalaga kung anong lumalabas sa bibig mo. Ang mahalaga, ang action mo. Paano ka magpapatuloy? Paano mo tatanggapin ang pag ng Diyos at paano mong iibigin ang Diyos? Narito po ang isang tao na nagmamahal sa Panginoon pero na-fail niya si Jesus three times. Ilang beses daw dinenay si Jesus? Three times. Anybody here, you haven't failed Jesus yet in your life? You have to finish this sermon if you're that person. We all have failed Jesus at least three times in our life. So this story is not the story of Peter. This is our story. We are here in this story. Tayo ang nasa kwentong ito. No? Huwag kang matakot, gaganda ang kwento na to. Huwag kang matakot. No, pagkasabi ko ikaw yan, bigla kong pakit naman ang kwento ko. Gaganda to, I tell you, I tell you. Fasten your seatbelt, gaganda to. Sa book ng Mark, hanggang, hanggang dyan na lang ang kwento patungkol kay Pedro. So hinanap ko ang katuloy ng kwento ni Petra. Nasa John chapter 21. No? So si Mark, hanggang dyan lang na ikwento niya, pero si John, na ituloy niya pa kung anong nangyari kay, kay Peter after this particular time. So ituloy natin sa John chapter 21. The next thing that we hear about Peter is after Jesus died and was buried and rose again from the dead. To make the long story short, natigil po tayo dun sa three times na dinenay ni Jesus si Peter. Tapos lahat na ng story patungkol na kay Jesus, nag-sacrifice siya, na-crucify siya, namatay siya, nilibig siya, nabuhay siya muli, bumalik si Pedro sa eksena. Buti na lang bumalik. Kala ko tinanggal ka na talaga sa kwento eh. Noong sa mano, pag natanggal tayo sa kwento, bumalik pa. So John chapter 21 verse 3, tuloy natin ang kwento. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will also come with you. Nang influence pa. They went out and got into the boat and that night they caught nothing. So si Simon Peter ngayon, dito po sa kwento na ito, sabi, bumalik sa pangingisda. Tumigil na siya sa pangingisda kasi tinawag siya ng Panginoon para maging disipulo. Nag-start na siya mag-preach na church at nag-start siya mag-minister. No, naging active sa ministry, but then again, along the way, yun nga eh, na-fail niya si Lord three times. To make the long story short, nawala siya sa sarili niya, nawala siya sa uliran niya, nawala siya sa tamang direksyon niya, hindi niya alam kung saan siya pupunta. Kaya nga ba, dun sa araw na yun, sabi niya, mangingisda na lang ako. Bakit? Kasi yun yung alam niyang gawin. So, bumalik na lang siya sa dati niyang buhay. Kapatid, 
Huwag na huwag kang titigil sa pagmamahal mo sa Diyos at sa pagsunod mo sa Diyos. Kasi ang tendency mo, pag tumigil ka, babalik ka lang sa lumang buhay mo. Am I clear? So, Peter went back fishing. Why do you think he went back fishing? Because he was disappointed. He was disappointed. He was at the point whereby he almost, no, almost at the point of conclusion na sinasabi niya, this is not for me. This is not gonna work for me. It's so hard to be a Christian. So he was disappointed. Why was he disappointed? He was disappointed at who has, he has become. He knew that he loved the Lord. He knew that he is eager to serve the Lord. But he came to a realization. I am not anymore who I used to be with regards to loving God. Nakakatuwa yung kwento na to kasi kwento to ng bawat isa sa atin eh. Na nagpipail, di ba? Lahat tayo may kahinaan, lahat tayo may mga bagay na kumapalpak tayo, especially pagdating sa relationship natin sa Panginoon. So si Pedro nagfail siya. Pero ang ganda ng kwento na to kasi hindi siya natapos that Peter was a failure. Papasok na tayo ngayon. So nakita niyo yung background ni Pedro. Okay? Mahal naman niya ang Diyos eh. Kaya lang na-fail niya at na-disappoint niya ang Panginoon. Tingnan natin, ano ngayon ang response ng Panginoon? John chapter 21, let's read from verse 6 to 8. When the day was now breaking, Jesus stood on the beach, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. So Jesus said to them, Children, do you not have any fish, do you? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right hand side of the boat, and you will find a catch. So they cast, and then they were not able to haul it in because of the great number of fish. Therefore, that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. It's Jesus. Sabi ni John kay Peter, Kung tutuusin natin, pagkakusin namin na nandyan yung taong pinagkakautangan mo, may atraso ka, no? ano magiging reaction natin? No? No, no, may atraso ka sa akin. No, may atraso ka sa akin. No, which is totoo. totoo. No, may atraso ka sa akin. Tapos, umiiwas ka. No? Nag-church ka, pero umiiwas ka sa akin. Alam mo na doon ako umuupo. So, laging doon ka umuupo. Alam mo na eh. No? E ano magiging reaction mo kung yung katabi mo, biglang sinabi. to us when we grow in our love to the Lord, when we grow in our relationship with God. The shallower your relationship is with God, your tendency is always to withdraw. 
Your tendency is always to run away. When the Lord is speaking to you, the Lord is reaching out to you, your tendency is always to think, oh, I am not worthy of that. But the more you grow, the more you understand the love of God, you may have failed so many times the way Peter did, pero nag-grow din. Si Peter nag-grow din. Nag-grow siya, oh. Sabi dito, nalaman niya si Jesus, hindi siya nagpatay mali siya. Hindi siya nagsabing, ah, akin yung bag mo, akin yung bag mo, itabon mo sa ulo ko, ipasok mo sa ulo, dali, ipasok mo yung ulo ko sa bag mo, dali. Hindi siya nagtago. Hindi siya nagsabing, tsaka yung sarap ang kutsok sa, huwag siya sasabihin, nandito ako, huwag ako. Hindi. Sabi niya, si Jesus nandyan, wait lang ha, dyan muna kayo, tas takbo siya kay Jesus. Alam niya na kay Jesus, may pag-asa pa siya. And I want you to understand a little bit Uh, another part of this story. Alam nyo po, sa kwentong ito, tapos na po ang mission ni Jesus eh. Namatay na siya eh. Nilibing na siya, nabuhay na siyang muli. Immediately after three days, pwede na siyang bumalik sa heaven. Are you listening? Are you following me? Pwede na siyang umuwi. Bakit? Kasi tapos na yung mission niya. Yun lang naman ang ipinunta niya, di ba? Para tubusin tayo sa kasalanan natin. Para mamatay siya on our behalf. To take our place and be crucified. To take all the punishments for our sin. And then, tapos na. Pero tingnan po ninyo ang dakilang pag-ibig ng ating Panginoon. Pinili niya po na wag munang umalis. Bakit? Ayaw niyang iwanan si Pedro sa kalalagayan niya. Ano bang kalagayan ni Pedro? Nagkasala siya, disappointed siya, frustrated siya. Maybe there are some of you here, you are in that state right now. You have disappointments in life, maybe could be about the past, could be about the present, or even, even l- right this particular moment, you have disappointments in life. But I want to encourage you this afternoon, you know what? Jesus will not leave you at that state. Jesus will always go out of His way to reach out to you, to meet with you, and change your disappointment into your gladness. Change your sin into your strength and your capacity to love God. Ang Panginoong Jesus po, hindi pumayag na iiwanan niya si Pedro sa ganong estado. Yan po ang dakilang pag-ibig ng ating Panginoon. Kahit na tumatakbo ka na, kahit na lumalayo ka na, kahit na umiiwas ka, kahit na nagkakamali ka pa rin, ang Panginoon, patuloy na hinahanap ka. At kahit nasa ang kaman, makakatagpo ka niya. Ladies and gentlemen, this is love at its best. Ang ibang pag-ibig, kapag nagkamali ka na, iiwanan ka na. Ang ibang pag-ibig, pag nagkulang ka, pababayaan ka na. Ang pag-ibig ng Diyos, mas nagkukulang ka, mas nagre-reach out siya. Mas nagkakamali ka, mas inaabot niya ang kamay niya. Kapatid, anak, hindi mo na kaya sa sarili mo, akong bahala sa iyo. This is how much God loves each one of us. Don't ever be thinking that coming to church is just spending an hour, an hour and a half or two hours in church just to be encouraged, just to be entertained, just to feel good for a little bit. Coming to church is about the love of God. Coming to church is about understanding the love of God. Let's continue with the story in verse 9. Paganda ng paganda tong storya na to. Love at its best. Verse 9. So when they got out on the land and they saw a charcoal fire already laid and fish placed on it and bread, Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Mag-pause tayo for a while. Papaganda, paganda ng paganda to. Pero sabi dito, nakakita si Jesus daw nag-iihaw. Tapos kinu- hiningi yung mga isda. Tapos sabi doon, nakahuli daw sila ng 153. Sabi niya, 153. Pa, a- anong significance niyan? Gusto niyong malaman kung anong significance ng 153? Gusto niyong malaman? Are you sure? May significance kaya yon? Bakit naisulat dyan? Hindi ko alam. Hindi ko alam, pero naisulat lang yan. But 
Ito yung beauty ng Bible. Kaya nasulat na 153. Ibig sabihin, actual account to. Hindi ho to invento. Actual account, nakita ng tao, binilang nila 150, kaya sinulat siya. Ang Bible ho, hindi imbento. Ang Bible ho ay buhay. Ang Bible ho ay totoo. Wag na wag ho ninyong iisnabi ng Bible. Pag uwi ninyo ng bahay, bumili ho kayo ng Bible. Ibenta nyo ang cellphone nyo, bumili ho kayo ng Bible. Mahalaga ho ang Bible. Nakuha natin, ang ganda ng high heels mo, wala ka namang Bible. Ayan, natawa sila. Sa pagtawa, kasama ang guilt. Okay, verse 12. Okay? Sabi, sabi ng isang pastor, ang mga Pilipino mahilig tumawa dahil yun ang kanilang paraan ng pag-handle ng kanilang guilt. Ah, kita nyo? Oh, diba? Yan. Verse 12. Ito na. Verse 12. Ito na. Ito na. Ito na. Malapit na tayong matapos sa story natin. At marapit, malapit na rin tayo humantong sa two points. At malapit na tayong mag at Malapit na kayo mag-date. Okay. Verse 12. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples ventured to question him, who are you? Because they all knew that it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and the fish likewise. So here is Jesus, the man who knows love at its best. Here is Peter who thought he knew love at its best. He tried his best, but his best just wasn't good enough. Ayan na naman ang mga bitter. Umaawit na naman ho ang mga bitter. Pero tingnan po ninyo, si Pedro, hindi ba, dinenay niya si Jesus. Ilang times? Three times, di ba? Sino sa inyo may mga, sino sa inyo, meron kang kalaban, kaibigan, no? niloko ka, dinenay ka, binetray ka, no? kagaya, kagaya ni Pedro na yan. No? Sino sa inyo pag meron kang ganyang kaibigan na naging kaaway mo, paghahanda mo pa ng agahan? Aba, nung nagde-devotional ako, talaga sabi ko sa Lord, pambihira namang pag-ibig ito. Iniloko ko niyan eh. Paghahanda ko siya ng agahan, pero sisiguraduhin kong may lason. <laughs> hindi nga. Hindi nga. A- ako, honest ako sa inyo. Yan talaga naging damdamin ko. Nung binabasa ko, pinag-aaralan ko, pambihira. Ha, magkikita rin tayo. Ha, naku, sinasabi ko sa iyo, handa-handa na ako. As in, handa-handa ako. No? Handa na ang patalim, handa na ang ice peak. No? Handa na naka-high heels ka para yung takong mo, yun ang talagang ipopoke mo sa mata niya. Ganyan. <laughs> Bakit hindi kasi tayo marunong ng love at its best? Kaya dito pinakita ngayon ng Panginoon, love at its best. Niloko ka na, tinalikuran ka na, iniwang ka na, inalipusta ka na, inapi ka na, dinihado ka na. Ano ginawa ni Jesus? Halika, nagluto ako. Kain tayo. Imba? I want you to understand that is the God that you serve. That is the God that we serve. That is the God that we worship. Nagkamali ka ni. Sinaktan mo na siya. Nakuha natin. Iniwan mo na siya. Tinalikuran mo na nga siya. Patuloy pa rin nagre-reach out. Hindi, ito matinti. Talaga hindi ko makomprend. Napakamot ako sa ulo ko nung nagdi-divo ako. Napapakamot ba kayo pag nagdi-divo kayo? Hindi ko makomprend eh. Pwede na binilhan na lang, di ba? Pa-deliver na lang. Deliver mo doon. Huwag sasabihin ko sino bumili. Kaaway ko yan eh. No? Pwede naman ganun, di ba? Pero hindi. Kamay niya ginamit. Kamay niya. May isda. So makikita po ninyo sa kwento na yan, nung humingi siya ng isda, actually may luto ng isda. Ibig sabihin ng Panginoon, nang isda na siya bago pa bumalik si, Pe- si Peter. Nang isda na siya sa sarili niyang effort, inihanda niya na ang lahat. Bumalik ka lamang! This is love at its best. Amazing. Point number one, love is for all seasons. 
Love is for all seasons. It's not just during good times. True love is even during the disappointments. Times of pain and times of disappointment. Sabi nga, disappointments are like the megaphone of God. God uses disappointments, God uses pain so that He can speak to us. So don't ever be thinking that in the time of disappointment, in time of pain, God is not there. No, God is there. God is reaching out to you. God wants to help you. God wants to change and switch your information and turn your, your situation and turn it around. From frustration, from disappointment to success. From pain, bitterness into healing. Friends, this is love at its best. I want you to understand today, God loves you in all the seasons of your life. And if we're going to love people, we're going to love people in all seasons of our life. Whether we're up, whether we're down. This is love at its best. Whether you please me or not, I love you. Whether you make me happy or you make me sad, I love you. While I was doing my devotional and I was praying for this sermon, I began to pray and ask and start to meditate. What if every household, every member of every household, will learn to love at its best? What a family we're going to have. What in every community, every family will have love at its best, at the core and center of their household. What if every Filipino will have love at its best? What a beautiful nation and what a beautiful people we are going to be. And when I was preparing for this sermon, I was praying to the Lord, Lord, make our church a church who loves at its best. Because if we love and it's not at its best, I'm going to have doubts if it is love at all. Amen? So love is for all seasons. Let me read to you, uh, not, not anymore a poem, but my devotional. Your capacity to love is based on your capacity to handle disappointment. Your capacity to love is based on your capacity to handle disappointment. So pag disappointed ka na, iwanan mo na si Lord. Ganun ba yon? Labo mo tol. But when you're disappointed and you're able to stay, that's love right there. There is no greater love than this that a man would lay down his life for a friend. Listen to this. Love is not expecting to get something that will make you feel better. Love is about encouraging the person who disappointed you to change and become better. Not so that you will not be disappointed anymore, but because you know that it is what is good for him. Love is not inward focus. Love is always outward focus. You disappoint me, it's okay. I'm still going to encourage you. I believe you're going to become a better person still. You're still a work in progress. What a beautiful life group. If in every life group, it's like that. You fail, you have a mistake, it's okay. I encourage you. You made me feel sad for 10 seconds. But now I want to encourage you. And because this is what love is. Love brings out the best in every person. Love brings out, love makes a person better. Amen? Another thing, love is not about expecting to be happy and pleased by others. But it is about being always eager to help somebody become better. That is what Jesus did to Peter. Right? Pwede naman nga umuwi na si, si Jesus after niya makrucify, di ba? Tapos na yung mission niya eh. Pero hindi niya, hindi, hindi niya pinabayaan si Pedro na ganon. Sabi niya, wait lang. Kailangan may mangyari kay Pedro. Ang hirap namang maiwan siya sa ere. Si Lord hindi nang iiwan sa ere. Tatapusin niya kung anong ginawa niya sa buhay mo. At hindi kanya niya iiwanan na frustrated, hindi kanya niya iiwanan in pain. He will always go out of his way to meet with you and touch you and change you and encourage you. Because love is not meant to be kept. Love is meant to be given away. Pwede namang tinago na lang ni Jesus yung pag-ibig niya sa tao, inuwi niya na lang sa heaven, pero hindi. Love is not meant to be hidden. Love is not meant to be kept. 
love is meant to be expressed and given away. So if we're going to say we love our family, we love one another, then there has to be an expression to that. There has to be an action behind those words. Amen? So kumain na sila ng breakfast. Ituloy natin ang kwento at patapos na tayo rito. Sabi ko sa inyo, two points lang. Diba? Two points lang. Patapos na tayo. So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? Ayan na. Sa haba ng pinag-usapan nila ni Jesus, lumabas na. The L-O-V-E word. He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, I can imagine Peter. I can imagine Peter. So Jesus was asking, Peter. So busog na, nagbaburp, burp, burp. Ay, excuse me. Sorry, sorry, Jesus. Burp. Kasi ang dami yung nakain. Eh. Gutom na gutom siya sa pangingisda niya. Sabi ni Jesus sa kanya, Peter, matanong kita, ako ba talaga mahal mo? Natanong ka na ba ng ganyan? No? Kami mag-asawa, lagi kami nagtatanungan ng ganyan. Ako na, i-share ko tuloy yung secret ko sa inyo. Nabigla ako eh, nabigla ako. No? Lagi yung nagtatanungan ako, do you love me? Ganyan ako lagi. Ang sagot niya, yes, you know that I love you. Ang sagot ko sa kanya, tend my sheep. <laughs> biblical kami. Even our romantic love is a biblical love. Uy, joke lang po yun. <laughs> <laughs> Na-imagine nyo, no? Na-imagine nyo kaming dalawa, nag-uusap mo. Honey, do you love me? Sabi ni Carlo, oh naman, I love you. Sagot ko sa kayo, okay, feed my sheep. No? So, lumabas na kayo yung love. No? Tinanong, pag ikaw tinanong, mahal mo ba ako? Ang dali namang sagutin, oo oh, naman, mahal kita. Tapos may dinugtong si Jesus, ah, mahal mo ako. O, oh, sige, tend my lambs. Ang matindi kay Jesus, hindi siya nakontento sa isang sagutan. Ilang beses siyang dinanay ni Peter? Tingnan nyo, tatlong beses din yan tinanong si Peter. Bible scholars said, the reason why three times siyang tinanong about love, three times ni-renew yung love relationship between Jesus and Peter, is because those three times were the three healings for the three betrayals that Jesus did. That's how beautiful the love of God is for us. Kahit gano'ng karami mo siyang i-fail, gano'n din karami ang act na gagawin niya para mahil ka. Bumalik ka lamang, baby. Verse 16. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, shepherd my sheep. The third time in verse 17, Simon, son of John, do you love me? This time, Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. On the third time, si Peter na apektohan na, sabi doon may kurot na sa puso niya. E-explain ko sa inyo kung bakit. Kasi po, ang love, meron po yung iba't ibang levels ng love. No? So yung isa pong love is agape love. Agape love is unconditional love. Ito po yung the love that God gives to us and the love that we are supposed to give to Him. Unconditional. Ibig sabihin, love for all seasons po yun, Yung agape love. And another love is phileos. Pag sinabing phileo, no, hindi ito yung phileo fish. Hindi po yun, no? Pag sinabing phileo or phileos, no, ito po yung brotherly love. Ibig sabihin, casual love. Ibig sabihin, I love you for as long as I'm getting something from you. But the moment I don't get anything anymore, then sorry, I need to find somebody else to love. Ang babaw. So ganito po yung conversation nila. Agape, the verb for agape is agapao. Ang tanong ni Jesus kay Pedro, Do you agapa? Do you agapao me? Nabulul pa eh. Do you agapao me? Sagot ni Peter, I fileo you. Kaya pala, nung nakikita niyang dinadakip na si Jesus, hindi na siya mapagtatanggol, hindi na siya may papakain, wala na siyang pwedeng makuha, natalikuran niya. Bakit? Kasi fileos pala. Pangalawang beses tinanong ni Jesus, Do you agapao me? Peter said, Lord, you know it, I fileos you. Ay, hindi magpanagpo. Sa pangatlong tanong, Do you agapao me? 
Kaya po may kurot sa puso ni Pedro for the first time in forever. Na-realize niya at na-accept niya. He failed Jesus in terms of loving him. Na-realize niya all this time I was just giving God phileo kind of love. And all this time, He has been giving me agape love. And the reason why Peter was grieved is because he realized how much pain he has caused in the heart of Jesus. And this is a turning point in the life of Peter. From this time on, Peter understood what God's love is. And from this time on, Peter was able to respond to God's love with agape love. I pray that today will be a turning point in your life. I've been praying for this sermon and I've been praying for you. Every time I prepare for a sermon, I don't pray for the word. I pray for the people who will hear the word. I spent nights of interceding for you. It's not an accident why you are here today. I prayed for you. And I pray that today is going to be a day that you will have a turning point in your life. That you will receive the love of God in its full measure and that you will be able to respond to the love of God and love Him back in the full measure that He deserves. And then after love was settled, Jesus told Peter, tend my lambs, shepherd my sheep, tend my sheep. Point number two, love is on a mission. Love is on a mission. Kung akala mo ang pag-ibig, ina-enjoy lang ng isang babae at isang lalaki na nakakainlaban sa isa't isa ang babaw niyan. Tawag dyan eros kind of love, romantic love. Yan po ang pinakamababaw na level ng love. So kung yan po ang pinaka-inaaspire mo sa buhay mo, napakababaw po ng inaaspire mo. Ang deepest and truest level of love is agape love. So nung nasettle yon sa puso ni Pedro, sabi ng Panginoon kay Pedro, kung talagang mahal mo ko, may gagawin ka. May action ka. I want you to understand that love is not just an emotion. Sabi nga ng tatay ko kanina, binulong niya sa akin, love is not a noun. Love is a verb. It's not something that we talk about. It's something that we do. In the family, it's something that we do. It's not just something that you say to one another, I love you. No. When you say, I love you, sabi ni Lord, Mahal mo ko? O sige, mag-alaga ka ng tupa. Lord, mahal kita. Mahal mo ko? O sige, mag-reach out ka, mag-invite ka pa ng maraming tao. Because love is on a mission. Amen? So the real question for us today is, how much do you love God? If there is going to be a temperature, a thermometer, sino sa inyo nilagnat na ever? Nilagnat? Tapos yun na thermometer ka? No? May thermometer rin sa kilikili, iniipit. No? So kung merong thermometer ngayon na susukatin yung pag-ibig natin sa Diyos, ano kaya ang magiging reading ng thermometer sa buhay mo? In terms of percentage, is it 0%, 50%, 75%, 95%, or 100%? Mahalaga pong isettle natin yan sapagkat sa Matthew 22, verse 35 to 39, ito pong sinasabi doon. One of them, a lawyer asked him a question testing him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and foremost commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. This question was asked because in the Jewish culture, there are 613 commandments. Sa Torah po, merong 613 commandments. So once and for all, tinanong po nila si Jesus, Jesus, ano ba yung pinakamahalaga? Ang dami naming sinusunod. Ano ba yung pinakamahalaga? And I want to minister that to you. Maybe you have been doing so many things and you think these are the things that will please God. I'm sure ministry please, pleases God. I'm sure reaching out, preaching the word of God, inviting people, that truly pleases the Lord. But if we're gonna ask the Lord today, Lord, what's the most important commandment of all? The most important command, commandment of all is to love God with all that you have. All your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Loving God partially is disobeying this command. It's not actually hate that is the opposite of love. The opposite of love is indifference. 
What is indifference when you cannot offer love 100%? It's not that you hate God. It's just that you don't love Him 100%. Today, if God is going to ask you, do you love me more than this? How much do you love me? I prayed for you many nights before today. And I prayed that you will answer the Lord and you will tell Him, Lord, I love you with all of my heart, with all of my mind with all of my strength, with all, of, with all of my soul. Maybe you feel like you cannot do that, but the grace of God and the love of God is going to touch you right now. And His love overflowing in your heart will be the key and the motivation for you to be able to love Him as well. Love for God is the foundation of everything that we are going to do for Him. Great, greater love is no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John 15, 13. Ladies and gentlemen, this is love at its best. Let's pray. All over this auditorium, just bow down your head, just close your eyes. I pray that the Lord would touch you right now and His love would just overtake you right now. Madama mo ang pag-ibig ng Diyos. Maybe you are that person, you have frustrated, you have disappointed the Lord. But God is telling you today, it doesn't really matter how many times you have disappointed me. What matters is that you come back to me. That is what true love is. That is love at its best. It doesn't really matter how far you have gone right now in walking away and running away from me. God is telling you today, what matters is that you are running back into my arms. And that you are running back to me. Lord, we thank you for your wonderful love. We thank you for your great love. Indeed, this is matchless, Lord God. Your love is matchless. Like it is at the level of unbelievable, Lord. Lord, it's impossible for you to love us. We are in sin. We have failed you so many times, yet you keep on loving us. You keep on reaching out to us. You keep on running after us. You keep on looking after us, Lord God. Father, right now, I pray all over this auditorium, ipadamo mo sa bawat isa ang pag-ibig mo, ang dakilang pagmamahal mo, Lord God. In the same way, Lord God, that you have laid down your life for your friends. Lord, today I pray that you would grant each one of us the capacity to receive that into our heart. To understand that you gave your life for us. That you died on the cross for us because you love us. And that no matter how hard we try to run away from you, you will always find us. You will always look for us. And you will always help us to come back to you. Lord, I pray for your love to touch every person today, Lord God. Greater love is no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for a friend. Right now, there are some of you here, you are frustrated. You are disappointed with your life. Right now, God is encouraging you. That disappointment will just last for a night. But there is joy in the morning. The love of God can turn things around. Just receive the love of God right now. There are some of you here, you feel like you are unworthy. You don't deserve any more the love of God. Let me tell you this. Nobody really deserves the love of God. Nobody will ever deserve it. None of the things that we do, none of the things that we will ever try to do will make us deserve the love of God. But here's the reality in the eyes of God. By His grace, we are all deserving of that love. No matter how difficult, how ugly your past is. No matter how ugly your journey has been, the love of God is ready to rescue you. Father, let your love saturate this place all over this auditorium, Lord God, Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord God, that you would touch every person. Let your love bring healing to our hearts, Lord God. Let your love turn away every disappointment, every pain, 
every difficulty, every frustration, Lord God. Lord, turn our sorrow into joy, Lord God. Turn our frustration into dancing, into rejoicing, Lord God. Knowing and understanding that you love us no matter what. Father, we thank you for this afternoon. Today, we receive love. Not the shallow level of love, but love that is real. The love that comes from you. Love that is at its best. We thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Come on. Give the Lord your best praise.